الرحيم ونستفتح بما هو خير الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما غلق الخاتم لما سبق اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الأولين وفي الآخرين وفي الملك الأعلى يا رب العالمين الحمد لله السلام عليكم everybody nice to see everyone again here for فق in the park after dark ما شاء الله um, here at Center DC in Washington DC. These lectures are recorded by Anas Mashallah, may Allah bless him, and posted on YouTube as well. So if you want to watch them again later, and the text, the translation of the text will be up there also. Uh, so that should be helpful, inshallah. So we stopped uh, in the rain on the chapter on Ghusl. Of all things, alhamdulillah. And the word ghusl, of course, means ritual bath. Ghusl is actually the water you use for ghusl. Like wudu and wudu. Wudu is like a jar of water. Wudu is the act. So ghusl is the water that you use for ghusl. Can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Wudu is the Yeah, so wudu with a, with a wow. Wudu is like ina'ul ma, the jar of the water that you would use. And wudu is the act. And then the ghusl is the full body wash, and the ghusl is the water or the washing, but not the full body washing. Oh, it's not that important. Like it's not knowledge that we're going to help or benefit, but just FYI. The Sheikh he says, Sheikh al Sayyidna al Akhdari, قالوا يجب الغسل من ثلاثة أشياء. He said that ghusl becomes an obligation because of three things. One of three things. Al-janaba. The word janaba actually means to be far from something. Al-jari al-jamb. is like your far neighbor. Tanajab. Uh, Tanajabtu means like tabaadtu. Why? Because someone in the state of janaba is far from ibadah. So sexual defilement, al janaba. The second, al haid. And haid means to flood. Silanul ma, to flow. That's why. What do you call a fountain in Arabic? Everybody knows what. What do we call it? Haudul ma, from the same word. Because the water flows. One nifas. For anyone that's had a baby, nifas from nafas. Nafas means to take a break. To nafus, catch your breath. But of course now we understand to mean postpartum bleeding. فقال الشيخ رحمه الله يجب الغسل من ثلاثة أشياء. Here, min doesn't mean from, also if you speak Arabic, min means because of. Sababiyya. Sometimes people translate it, they say like, you know, gusul is obligation from three things. What the heck does that mean? It's not what that means, it's because of. Bima'na al ba' sababiyya. Fayajibu al gusul bi thalathati asha. That's the meaning of it. For the students that I have, some students that read these kind of texts. It's important to know that. So, gusul is the full body wash that we engage in because of three issues, three things. So wudu is like the minor form of purification. Now we're talking about the major form of purification. And then after that, we're going to talk about na'ib anhuma. What can step in and represent either wudu or ghusl is going to be tayammum. And today, inshallah, if it doesn't rain, we're going to make tayammum to make tayammum, not to pray, but just to practice. Inshallah. فَقَالَ الْجَنَابَةُ أَوْ الْجَنَابَةِ وَالْحَيْدِ وَالْنِفَاسِ He says, فَالْجَنَابَةُ قِسْمَانِ Sexual defilement is two types. أَحَدُهُمَا خُرُوجُ الْمَنِيِّ بِلَذَّةٍ مُعْتَادَةٍ فِي نَوْمٍ أَوْ يَقَضَةٍ بِجِمَاعٍ 
The first is that someone releases semen related to like an orgasm or pleasure. Mu'tad. And in Arabic, these different kind of like you hear it. Yani, khurujul maniyi biladhatin mu'tadatin. All these like little words you hear, they're like restricting it now. They're restricting the application of what this means. So if somebody has a release of semen that's just like, you know, maybe they fell down. Happens sometimes. That's not like a normal situation. It's not sex. Or it's cold. I remember one time in, in Egypt, we had a student in our class. It was really cold. He had a problem. That's different than than like the normal natural way that comes with sexual pleasure. So that excludes people, right, outside of that definition. In, in fiqh we call this quyud. Quyud al-ta'rif or quyud al-had. Meaning it restricts the idea in your mind. So you know exactly what the writer is talking about. This is legalese, basically. So he says like, because of the release of semen. If you stop there, everybody's in trouble, right? That's due to pleasure. So there's one restriction. That happened naturally. That's the second restriction. Phenomen. Whether someone's asleep, al yaqaza, or awake. Bijima'in. With due to intercourse, al ghairihi or something else, say like masturbation, or foreplay. Or a fantasy, as we talked about last time. وَثَانِي مُغِيثُ الْحَشَفَ فِي الْفَرْجِ The second thing that causes ghusl to become obligatory, meaning before I can pray, right, before I can go to the masjid, as we're going to talk about later. If I could touch the Quran, if one of if this happened, I would have to make ghusl. MashaAllah. So the second is that any part of the male organ enters the female organ. Whether he ejaculates or not. And that's very important. What's called the munut of the hukum, or the illa of the hukum. What's the reason for this ruling? The reason is that the female, the male organ has entered the female organ. Muribu al hashafa fil farj. From ghiyab, unseen. So the male organ becomes unseen. If you want to understand it that way, because it has entered into uh, the female. And then he does something, maybe you're asking, what's going on? Last week when I started reading this, a few people were looking at me like, what on earth is happening? Why did suddenly Sheikh Al-Akhdari like, go this way? He's talking about this stuff and suddenly he takes an exit. So it's, it's very important when you're reading books of fiqh to understand every word usually and every sentence has been very well constructed this is a lawyer so they're writing in a very precise way and they're up to something and it's it's unfortunate and i don't get this vibe alhamdulillah from anyone here but oftentimes we project our inability to understand on the object that we're trying to understand instead of saying like let me stop for a minute and try to think deeper like we're very like sometimes we're very impatient you know like, why does sheikh write that i don't get it then get it. You know what I mean? It's not the Sheikh's fault. Mutanabi uh, and Busayri has a very nice poem. He says, you know, if the eye is infected, don't blame the painter. If the tongue, if the mouth has an infection, don't blame the chef. Like, be patient. We have to be patient sometimes. And religion is not always easy. There is a component of, like, religion that demands discipline and work and pushing ourselves and discipline and battling against the nafs. 
لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Like, mashallah, you came here like every week. Don't know if it's going to rain. I mean, that's like, this is like the early Muslims. They would come, they would go study, they would struggle, they would leave their work. Alhamdulillah, like you're on the path of your ancestors, man. That's a beautiful thing. مَنْ جَهَدَ حَتْمًا سَيَنَاب Say like, who works hard, they achieve. So why does he do what he's about to do? He says, وَمَنْ رَأَى فِي مَنَامِهِ كَأَنَّهُ جَامِعْ وَلَمْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْهُ مَنِيٌّ فَلَا شَيْءَ عَلَيْهِ Why suddenly does he go this way? He says, these are the two things that if they happen, out of the three, you gotta make ghusl before you can worship, right? The first he said is the... Here we go. Starting to make ghusl. That... Someone experiences a release of semen in a normal way that's coupled with pleasure. Doesn't have to be an orgasm, could be like foreplay, as even Abi Zaid he talks about in his Risala. And you know, we're adults, right? So that, that brings up a question like when a person's spouse is on their menstrual cycle, is it okay to pleasure the husband? until he reaches orgasm. In the madhab, absolutely. Of course, without engaging the area of the vagina. Perfectly acceptable in the madhab. And in fact, one time I was studying this chapter and I didn't understand Arabic really well. And I was memorizing it and I had a roommate from Jordan. So I was walking around the house regaining Arabic. You know, like it's allowed for them to engage in foreplay. And then it was like this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this is allowed, and this is allowed, and this is allowed, and this is allowed. And then my Jordanian roommate, he was like, man, what are you studying? I said, man, this is, this is Azhar, man. He's like, man, I want to go to Azhar. <laughs> then I got my dictionary. I was like, nah, brother, astaghfirullah, right? But it shows you that the madhabs, they were mature. They understood issues. They, they dealt with people's life. Piety that's used as an excuse not to speak to the issues that people deal with is actually hypocrisy. Because you're too insecure in your religion to really engage what's happening in the world, man. Whereas this chapter in the madhab, especially we won't read it in this text, under menstruation, both male and female, the spouse, what are the limits of sexual relationship? Why the wife is menstruating? Because this is going to happen. And they talk about that in there. So when he says, what, do you, what we understand it now is foreplay, uh, mutual pleasuring at one another, and things like this. Within the books of fiqh. Yeah. What did the Maliki scholars say about oral sex? So the Maliki scholars in general, oral sex considered permissible because there's no evidence to say oral sex. It's, not, it's a great question, right? It's, these are things that couples, as they're about to get married, right? Not way before, should generally have someone facilitate a conversation around what that relationship may look like. And it's generally it's considered allowed. Allah says you can engage in your, with your spouse in any way you like. But Sheikh Muhammad Wissam, who I trained under in Egypt, in Dara Ifta, used to say that, you know, it has to be mutual, right? If breastfeeding is a mutual decision, as we find mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, -Baqar, wa tashawurin, they consult one another about when to stop breastfeeding. Then he says, I take this as like an analogy to apply to any kind of physical relationship that they share. It's like actually a really beautiful point so that any type of sexual act is something that is mutually agreed upon. So consent or just like agreement, right? Like, you know, these are things and, and it shouldn't involve something that makes someone feel shamed uh, or, you know, they lose their dignity or it's not allowed, right? Because you're hurting people. But things like oral sex, we find some fuqaha, they said it's not allowed because this is something that people in the West do. Something that the people in the West do is not a dalil. That actually gives the West too much power. Mm. Now you're giving the West the power to tell you what's haram. Mm. So you got played. That's the ultimate okie doke. You played yourself. 
Because sometimes you can be so worried about not being someone that you become them. And then there are other ulama that don't allow it, but it is agreed upon that swallowing is not allowed. That's agreed upon. Unless it's inadvertent. Right? It's a great question. Well, and you don't have to apologize for asking this question. If Umm Sulaim stood up in front of everybody and said, Inna, Ya Rasulallah, Inna Allah la yastahi min al-haqq, Allah is not shy. Does a woman have to make ghusl if she has an orgasm? Right in front of everybody. The Prophet Sussam answered her question. So here's my question. Now after talking about the khuruj uh, al-mani, person experiences, ejaculates a man, due to natural circumstances and coupled with pleasure, or the male organ enters the female organ, then suddenly he goes, er, and he says, Somebody sees his or herself in a dream having intercourse with somebody. Then that person, there's nothing. They don't have to do anything. They have to make gusul. Why did he do that? Because think about the first two issues. The first issue was that if somebody experiences a release of semen outside of intercourse, then it has to be coupled with what? With pleasure, and it has to be natural. So outside of intercourse, the entire issue, the munut, the illa of the issue, is that ejaculation. But within intercourse, is the illa ejaculation or the act of intercourse? I'm asking you guys. The act, right? So there's two different issues happening here. So that's why he says if you have a dream and you don't, even if in that dream you are having intercourse, if you wake up and you don't see any sign of it, what's called balal, any wetness, you don't have to do anything because outside of intercourse, what causes gusul is the natural ejaculation. Now he's outside of physical sex. Whereas with insects, as the Prophet said, man jahad, whoever, you know, uh, enters his wife, even if he doesn't ejaculate, faqad wajaba al ghusl. You understand what he just did? Let me walk you through it. The first scenario is outside of intercourse. If there's a natural pleasure-based ejaculation. The second is the act of intercourse. Doesn't matter about ejaculation. Now it is the act of intercourse itself. The third situation is in a dream, you saw yourself having intercourse, but are you still, are you still outside of intercourse or not in a dream? In reality. So if you're outside of intercourse, then what's the concern? Is it the act of intercourse or you wake up and you find something? You wake up and find something. Now you see kind of what he's doing. He's playing with the law in the sense of not playing in a bad way. He wants to show you this is how this all applies to certain situations. So now it's not like you just took a, a quick turn. He's trying to train you in how to read a, a legal text. Again, let me say it. So the first scenario has to do with outside of the physical act. What causes the gusul is ejaculation. Second scenario is the physical act is happening. What causes the ghusl is not the ejaculation, is the intercourse. The third scenario brings both together, but is the physical act really happening? It's a dream. And here you learn something too. Do we take rulings from dreams? Oh, look what the sheikh just did to you without even saying it. So when comes, someone comes to you and says, it was all a dream. I used to read the Quran in MCC, right? Therefore, whoever doesn't read the Quran in MCC is going to hell. Brother, how could you say that? I saw it in a dream. What's the sheikh here inadvertently telling you? It's not allowed to take like those kind of physical rulings from dreams without saying anything about it. So it's a lot actually that's going on here, man. And actually when I'm teaching you this, I have to keep myself here, not go here. Because if I do that, we're not going to finish. But there's a lot happening in the text 
like this. Why would he suddenly do that? Because maybe in his time, people were saying, I saw my dream. You know, Yunus was telling me that I'm the next Salahuddin if I eat White Castle and make Tawaf 18 times around Iverson Mall. Let me put that on Facebook. Everyone, follow me. I saw my dream. But people do this all the time. So the dream doesn't equate to the physical ruling unless you see semen. But semen is not because of the act. Semen is what's considered what demands the gusul outside of the act. See what's happening. It's a lot happening actually right here. So just in three lines, we took like 10 qawaid. Well, like Sheikh Islam Saadi, a great, great scholar from Libya, when I read Ibn Ashir with him, this is how he taught me Ibn Ashir, with the qawaid. All these axioms, to the point that I had to start putting qaf. Qaf, axiom, 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 axiom. So that's what's happening here. Didn't have to do anything because there's an important axiom. You would remember this axiom. Right? That the rulings go according to their causes. The cause ain't there. There's no fluid, there's no liquid. And also something else, if you read Arabic or you read these books, whenever you see the word wow, usually it means this is a new idea. Usually, not always, but usually. It's not atf, it's istisnaf. So it says, and I'm going to test you guys. And whoever finds on their clothes whether male or female, according to the strongest opinion, signs of an orgasm. He says, mani and yabisan means dry sperm. La yadri, and he or she doesn't know. Mata al sabahu, when it happened. Iqtasala, they should make gusul. Wa a'ada ma sallam in akhri noma. And from the last time they slept, whatever they prayed since that time, they should make up those prayers. So let's say you have a person, we're not going to say anyone, because so many people, I don't want to say anyone's name this here. Let's say that, you know, Ibn Richard, Ibn Richard Marx woke up one day, prayed Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and then at Maghrib time, you know, he went to change his clothes, and then he's like, oh, wow. And he found, you know, the residue of semen in his clothes. The last time he slept was Fajr. So what would he need to do? According to this opinion, he would need to what? It make gusul and then pray Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib. Why? What axiom have I talked about 25,000 times here that comes into play in this position of the Maliki school? Exactly. Wow, dang, okay. Al yaqeen la yazuru bi shak. Certainty cannot be removed with doubt. And that acts of worship have to be largely made based on what? Certainty. Bara'a to dhimma. Wow, look at you, man. MashaAllah, holding it, holding it down. Awesome, that's so good. Love it. And when you read fiqh like this for a long time, it allows you to move like 30,000 feet above so you can start to serve community. Because oftentimes the particulars of a given fiqh situation, especially social issues, not acts of worship, our specific, Sheikh Taha used to say to me, bi bi'atin khas. We used to read al muwafaqat wa Sheikh Taha Jabr. Yani, tu bi bi'atin khas. That these things were constructed in a specific like epic and challenge and situation. And Al-Qarafi said, if you learn fiqh with the qawaid, it gives you a really broad understanding of things without having to go into little, little tiny particulars. Although the particulars are important. Sure. Yes, sir. So is it cert I guess the assumption of uncertainty in this case would be that before he went to sleep, his uh, clothes were fine. 
Well, his certainty is that he prayed without purity. Yeah, so he's got to go back and make those, make sure that my prayer is on certainty. So what if, like, for example, before you went to sleep the day before, I mean, he didn't check his garments to see if perhaps that happened before he went to sleep or something. I don't know. But he didn't make gusso over the day. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he didn't make, he had to make gusso, right, in order for his prayers to be valid. So he doesn't know what prayers. Yeah, so my question yeah. is, like, for example, if he didn't check his, his garments before he went to sleep, would he have... Perhaps you need to also pray the one before. La, la, this is Rahma now. Okay. This is a good question. He said, but what about, what if it happened, like, say he wore the same, because he ain't married yet, so he's, he wore the same clothes for like three days. Right, because only someone that's not married would do that. So, let's say it's been like three days, he wearing the same drawers. Okay. And then, subhanAllah, he finds it out of Rahma, because... One of the things we have an axiom again, al tajibu tasir, that difficulty makes things easy. That would be impossible for the guy, man. It would be, be like a difficult difficulty for him. Although there is an opinion, there's always an opinion. But we're going to keep it easy. That takes us to the next uh, discussion. I'm going to try to move quickly. About the fara'id. Of Ghusl. He says, Rahimullah, Fara'idul Ghusl Arba'atun. The obligatory components of Ghusl are four. A niyyah, of course, we talked about this already, no need to go back into it. In the Ma'lamaru bi niyyat, actions are by the intention. Wama umiru illa riya'aburu Allah mukhlisina lahu dina hunafa. That they were ordered to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ That's why the strong opinion of Ahl sunnah is that Tawheed al-Rububiyyah and Tawheed al-Ulahiyyah are the same thing. Only a small minority of the followers of Ibn Taymiyyah separated al-Rububiyyah wal-Ulahiyyah وَأَتْبَعَ الشَّيْخْ نَبَاز وَأَتْبَعَ الشَّيْخْ إِبْنُ أُثَيْمِينَ وَالشَّيْخْ الْبَانِ رَحِمُهُمُ اللَّهِ Yeah, Tawheed al-Rububiyyah means Allah's Lordship. Tawheed al-Ulahiyyah means worship. And this is how, subhanAllah, the, the movement of Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab justified killing the Muslims. Because they said the shirk is not in Rububiyyah, the shirk is in Uluhiyyah. This goes against the majority of Ahl Sunnah. Because they say in the Quran, Allah says, وَإِن سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهِ If you ask those mushukeen who created the heavens and the earth, they say Allah. So that's why Sheikh Ibn Baz, rahimahullah, he said that, in fact, the shirk of the Muslims now is worse than the shirk of the pagans around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ لَإِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَلَيْهِ ذَعَلِيمِ This is in his Majmu'ah Fatawi. As did Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. He said that the majority of Muslims are, are not Muslim because of Rububiyyah, of Uluhiyyah, excuse me. Tawheed al-Talaba, Talabiyyah, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has demanded you worship him sincerely and they separate this from lordship. Why? Because they say the people of Mecca, they said Allah is our Lord. But unfortunately, if you only took one verse of Quran, that would be the case. But we find verses in the Quran, that they, they also had problems in understanding rububiyyah. Not like Muslims. So the majority of Sunnis, they made the issue of shirk related to one of Allah's lordship. That's why the majority say, التوصل بالصالحين وأولياء والأنبياء جائز ليس بشرك. التأويز, to wear the Quran. The majority of Shafi'iyya والمالكية والحنفية وحتى معظم الحنابلة أجازوها. They allowed this because they didn't have this confusion with respect. This is not, uh, again, to, to attack, but we need to be aware of what we're exposed to. And why do most Muslims think that most of their other fellow Muslims are mushrik or ahlu bida or wrong? Is because of this understanding created by Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. He's the first to divide Tawheed into Rububiyyah, Uluhiyyah, Asma'i wa Sifat. And he said, this is the way of the Salaf. Ya Mawlana, you came 800 years after the Salaf. Who's closer to the Salaf? Imam al-Juwaini, Imam al-Ghazali, 
إمام الباقيلاني أبو حسن أشعري وإمام إبن تيمية With respect This is not an issue of, of تعصب مذهبي This is an issue of بحث research So why do they always mention نية 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 well, And the actions that follow نية Because we worship رب العالمين سبحانه وتعالى We don't separate أولوهية and ربوبية The majority of أهل السنة الماتريدية والأشعرية والحنابلة الأثر يعني أثرية They don't separate these two things This came through Imam Ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى وله اجتهاد والحمد لله يثاب أو لا يثاب يعني But this is something most people don't know and it had a grave impact and that's why groups like Daesh you can say to them La ilaha illallah they'll kill you the issue isn't that you affirm that Allah is a Rabb the issue isn't what you do but Abu Amr ibn Salah pay attention he said there's an ijma' that tawassul bi salihin laysa bi kufr there's an agreement of the scholars that make making tawassul with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salihin is not kufr. Imam Ahmed ibn al-Hanbal, when he was asked about tawassul be Sayyidina Rasulillah alayhi salatu salam, to ask Allah, I ask you by the greatness of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to bless me, Imam Ahmed, he said, quote, this is not an issue of aqidah, this is an issue of fiqh, because he understood those people have the rububiyya. He didn't confuse the two. And Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Allah yarhamu, in his Maju'a Fatawi, when he was asked about people making tawassul with Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Hadha min bab al-fiqh. It's from the bab of fiqh. Even he understood it's had nothing to do with, with uluhiyya. Tawassul, oh Allah, I ask you by the, the greatness of the Prophet to bless me, and so on and so forth. Bija'i Rasulillah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Fahadha amahu fi khilaf. People differ over this issue. We shouldn't say someone who doesn't choose to do it is a bad Muslim. Of course not. You shouldn't say that. But also someone who does, we shouldn't say they're mushrik because of uluhiyya. La. This is a mistake. And unfortunately, this was used by political powers to manipulate al-haraka, al-salafiyya, al-jurud, and other groups to fight and kill each other. As the Asha'ira in Morocco under Ibn Tormut were also manipulated to fight and kill people. We just need to be aware, don't fight and kill each other. But I encourage you to do research on this issue if you can. The origins of the splitting of Uluhiyya, which is the Tawheed of worshipping only for Allah. And splitting that from recognizing that Allah is Rabb. Allah is the one who provides for me, gives me, blesses me is the control of all things. Those scholars who take this opinion, like Sheikh Ali Sheikh, he wrote in his fatwa, that the people of Mecca, they already had this Tawheed. They had this Tawheed that Allah is the one that provides. Because he uses the verse, If you ask them who created everything, they say Allah. But you have to take all the other verses. They talk about the things that we have help us and harm us. This is rububiyya, shirk and rububiyya. But to say that the kuffar of Mecca's iman in Allah's lordship is the same as the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or as Sheikh Nabas said, better than the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A'udhu billahi min darik. And that's why the ulama of al-Azhar and other places respectfully and, you know, in some cases aggressively responded to this. Because they were worried it will be used to spill the blood of Muslims, man. To kill them. So when he says, Aniya, we're reminded, subhanAllah, Aniya implies that someone knows who their Lord is and they worship that Lord sincerely. Arubabiyya wal uluhiyya. Fakhalas yani. So he says, Aniya tu indu shuru'. The first obligation is to have the intention for ghusl when we start. Wal fawru. Fawru means not to break the process to the point where something dries. Wal dalk. We know this is something the Malikis are big on. We talked about dalk, so 
lightly rubbing the limbs. Wal'umum. Wal'umum means when the water touches every part of your body, the outer part of your body. Somebody asked me about piercing. Do I have to take out the piercing and the water has to go like in the hole? I don't know how big your piercing is, but no. Because what's in is not falling under the discretion of Ta'mi. What are the evidences for this? We talked about intention already. We just went on an interesting diatribe, obviously for a reason. That's being recorded. In the Actions are by the intention. Al-Fawr, we mentioned the hadith of the man that the Prophet saw him and there was a small part of his skin that was still dry and he told him to go back and wash this and the rest of his limbs hadn't dried yet. What Dalku, based on the narration of the Prophet ﷺ from Abu Huraira, that under every hair of your body, there's Janaba. And something has to be touched by water. فَاقْسِرُوا الشَّعْرَ So wash your hair well. Meaning here. وَانْقُوا الْبَشَرَ And also, unqu here is the Dalil, the Maddox said, unqu al-Bashara, and like rub your skin. So make sure you get the water into your hair and make sure that you rub your skin. This hadith is laid by Abu Dawood with Sayyidina Imam Tirmidhi. وَفِيهِ ضَعْف However, it's very important we talk about hadith. We mentioned there are four kinds of hadith. They fall under two general categories, accepted and rejected. And accepted in some things and rejected in other things. Three categories. Accepted is sahih and hasan. And then under that are two types of hadith. A hasan hadith that it has so many supporting narrations that it becomes sahih. Hasan or sahih li ghayrihi. So there's so many narrations that were hasan. And what's the difference between hasan and sahih? Is that in the skill of narrating, the narrator is not quite as perfect as those that are sahih. Hasan never has to do with character because a flaw in character, khalas, you're done. By the way, there's never a woman, a, never a woman liar in hadith and fu'ah. Never. SubhanAllah. That's what Imam al Dhahabi says in Lisan. So the first, right, is Sahih, then Hasan, and then a group of Hasan hadith that are so many that when brought together, they make them strong enough to be Sahih li ghayrihi because of other than them. The fourth is hadith that are da'if, but there's so many of them when they're all brought together, they become hasan. So hasan li ghayrihi. So in the area of acceptable, we mentioned four. Sahih, hasan, sahih li ghayrihi, hasan li ghayrihi. In da'if, as Imam Suyuti mentions in his alfiyah, like it's never ends, the different type of da'if hadith. But there are a form of da'if hadith that if, as I mentioned earlier, so many of them brought together, they become hasan. Another point about da'if hadith is not all da'if hadith should be rejected. For example, in Imam al-Tirmidhi Sunan, he mentions authentic hadith, he mentions acceptable hadith, he mentions weak hadith, but he says, those weak hadith I mentioned, yujra alayha al-amal, people acted on them. The early Muslims acted on them. So even if they were weak in the Sanad, I saw people do it. So here, even though this narration may be not strong, the Maliki argument is going to be the people of Medina used to do dawk. This was a practice that was observed by the people, the scholars of Medina. Yeah, really sure. How was Dalk during the something that was observed? Well, first of all, people would wear an izar when they would make ghusl, and you wouldn't necessarily see their private parts, and they would be in a place like in the desert or a public area, and they would make ghusl. I did this in Malaysia once, and you 
open it, just run the water down, and then you you do delk. Or they told them. Or like the narration of Aisha, the Prophet told me udalik to make delk. It's a good question, really good question. Because there's something very important about the early generations of Muslims. The fiqh that we learn through reading, they learn through watching. That was a living fiqh. And writing didn't really start to take hold in the Muslim world till after the printing press. I remember I had a teacher once when I was in college. And you know, at the end you go sell your books back in the days, you get the money. He's like, man, how could you sell books? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I had one copy of the Muwatta in my whole city. So we would like borrow it and copy it and borrow it and copy it and borrow it and copy it and borrow and copy it. So the way of learning was different. It's a really great question. Um, yes, sir. So um, doing dope for your back, um, you know, if you have like shoulder issues or something, that's, that's challenging, you know, to like reach your entire back. I mean, so if a person can't reach their back, are they like excused from doing dope? Yeah, of course. Back? So we, we understand, I'm going to talk about this in a minute, that purity actually is based on two very important principles. Al-Qudra, ability. Right? So ain't none of buddy Stretch Armstrong can go all the way, you know, to the back. And number two is Dhikr, remembering. It's a good question. Then he says, وَسُونَ نُوهُ غَصُلْ يَدَيْنِ إِلَى الْكَوْعَيْنِ كَالْوُضُ So we have an axiom that says the sunan of ghusl are almost exact like the sunan of wudu. So the first is when you start, you want to wash from here to your wrists. What did you use the word uh, ability? Al Qudra from Qadir. Wal mad mada wal istinshaq wal istinthar. To gargle water, to sniff water in your nose, and then to blow it out. Wa ghasl simakh al udhuni wa hiya al thuqabatu al dakhila tu fi ras. And to make sure you get this. On your ears. So here, sorry, this part, like in wudu. You know, we're talking about wudu here. And also here, but here the inner and the outer part. In ghusl. Why? Because one of the obligatory components of ghusl is what? Ta'meem. What has to touch everything. Then he says, وَفَضَائِلُ الْغُسْلِ الْبِدَايَةُ بِغَسْلِ النَّجَاسَةِ ثُمَّ الذَّكَرِ فَيَنْوِي عِنْدَهُ So this is important in the method. And here he uses the word غَسْل to mean wash, not the water. He says that the virtuous acts of ghusl, we talked about how these are things that the Prophet did, but not like to the same degree he did the sunnah. So that you could even say these are like minor sunnah or less emphasized sunnah. They call it fadail because it's like the cherry on the, on, the, on the ice cream, right? He said, number one is that you start by washing the impurity from your body. And then you wash your private part. And when you wash your private part, you make, you make the niyyah. فَيَنْوِي عِنْدَهُ And then you wash, so someone starts, they wash the filth off their body, they wash their private parts, now they go to wash what they would and will do, but only once. So my arm once, my face once, my head, and my feet. And you can do the feet then or later. And then you move to the top of your body, which is your head, because of its sharaf. This is the place of ilm, mashallah. And you wash three times your head. And then you pour water on yourselves. Of course, nowadays we're in the shower, it's very different. And then you would wash your right side once, except your private parts, because you already washed that. 
And when you start with your head again, putting that water in your head, you want to make the intention now for the ghusl again. So two niyyah. Just like we talked about the two niyyah for wudu, we have two niyyah in ghusl. So now when the water starts to hit my head, I'm, I'm making wudu, I'm making the intention, sorry, to arfa' hukum al-khabath, aw arfa' ma yamna'uni an al-ibadah. Right? So I'm making this intention to make gusul so I can worship again. Make it very easy for yourself. Then I pour the water, or if I'm in the showers, hey, right? And then step back and I can rub my right side. I don't touch my private areas, go all the way down. If I've already washed my feet, I'm good. If I haven't washed my feet, then I wash my feet. And in gusul, I wash between my toes, unlike wudu. Why? Because one of the obligations of ghusl is ta'meem. Water has to touch everything. And then back again. Left side. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Now I'm ready to go to the masjid. Question. Yes. If I recall correctly, the purpose of the two intentions during wudu was to distinguish between the sunnah and the fuddled aspects. So what's the rationale during Because the first intention is to... To remove the impurity, raful hadith. So I'm I'm removing the impurity from my body, raful najasa. Then I move to the second intention, which is dhus. If you don't do it, it's not the end of the world. This intention is enough. I'm just telling you. Again, this is from the fadail. I like it because it really centers you too. Because sometimes I know I waste a lot of time in the shower, man. You know? It's a place you get like a little mute going, you know? It's a kind of escape. It's your own personal spa. But, yeah, we shouldn't be wasting water, right? Get in, get out. Then he says, وَتَثْلِيلُ الْغَسْلِ الرَّاسِ وَتَقْدِيمُ الشَّقِّ جَسَدِ الْأَيْمَنِ وَتَقْلِيلُ الْمَاءِ عَلَى الْأَعْضَى And that's what he says at the end is, you know, don't waste water. So again, what are those virtuous things? Number one, to remove the filth, then to wash your private part with the intention of removing that filth or removing the hadith. Then you perform wudu, but only once, marra, marra. If you do it twice, nobody's going to get upset at you. Just that's what he's saying, marra, based on the hadith of Abdullah ibn Zaid. Then you start with your head, Make the intention for ghusl three times. And then you do the right side, then the left side. You limit the amount of water you use. And then you wash your feet if you didn't wash them yet. And then you're done. Once you have a ghusl, does that mean you automatically have wudu? Yeah, so if you just made, because you made wudu. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's going to equate to a wudu, yes. Yes, sir. If you're making ghusl with your spouse, and then you will, if, and I don't know if Maliki's um, touching hand is invalidating wudu or not, I'm not sure. So we talked about this, right, already? Yeah. Touching each other with pleasure. Oh, right. Right, remember? It's a good question, right? Okay. So, it's a great question, it's a good question though, right? Sayyidah Aisha made ghusl with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Um Salama. Uh, so if you're making ghusl and you touch your spouse, you know, unless you got one of them super baths, Right? Does that violate your wudu or not? No, it doesn't violate your ghusl for sure. But if there's no leather involved, it doesn't violate your wudu. Then he says, وَمَن نَسِيَ لُمْعَةً أَوْ عُدْوًا مِنْ غُسْلِهِ بَادَرَ إِلَى غَسْلِهِ حِينَ تَذَكُّرْ And so what Al-Akhdari does is he teaches you the axioms without telling you. Usually legal books are going to say, here's an axiom, here's an axiom, here's an axiom. You're like, oh my gosh, can I kick your bubble with all this? Right? So what he's doing now is he's not saying the axiom, but he's writing it in the text. Actually, a lot of the Malikis do this. Sheikh Dardir does it a lot in Aqrab Masadik. It's very powerful. So when Lauren contacted me, he said, can you teach a class on the, uh, the, the axioms, like Book of Fiqh? That's how the Malikis roll. Because they didn't like to divorce these axioms from... They, they don't want to become overly theoretical. Yeah. So they want to tie them to a mas'ala, 
to an actual physical act so you can envision its application. Just like your question now, when I said, without the leather, oh yeah, 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 oh, okay. So immediately you're able to, to see that issue. So he says, وَمَنْ نَسِيَ لُمْعَةً Whoever forgot a spot. While they were making ghusl. Or udwan, or one of the limbs. Min ghuslihi. And this, of course, is someone that's not like dementia, Alzheimer's. It's a different discussion. Badara ila ghuslihi hina tadakkur. As soon as that person remembers, they should go back and wash that area. Remember earlier I said that purification in this madhab is really based on two important ideas. The first was what? Who remembers? Ability and remembering. So he says, when that person remembers, go back. Because when they remember, then it became the obligation, became an obligation. What if someone has like was was? Oh man, I'm not sure. I'm not. Sure. Don't worry about it then. Don't, don't worry about that. But someone that's like it never happens to them, and they're just like, oh my gosh, you know what? I think I forgot to wash my head. <laughs> Let me go back and wash my head. Then it goes, wash your head. They just forgot, you know, it happens. Sometimes we're in a rush, you got kids screaming, diapers need to be changed. Do you have to continue from where you left off and you forget just like you do this, or you just kind of just... He's going to say it now. Good question, uh, Eunice. Just trying to... No, it's good, man. Thank you. Well, my Nessie Aluma, I, honestly, I want you to feel very comfortable asking questions, even if you don't agree with me. Don't worry. Like, I'm not... I ain't that important. And I'm sure I'll learn something. I, I don't know everything. I don't know half of things. I don't know everything. So feel free. Even if that happened after a month. But you got to be certain. Now, I don't know, maybe, I'm not sure. No, no, like, I know I forgot to wash my head. And that the person should repeat the prayers that they made since that time. You don't have to do it immediately. You can break it up and do it over time. But make up those prayers. And if someone, after they remember, they wait. They wait a long time, not like, oh my gosh, I'm at work, I gotta get at home and do it, or I'm at school, or you know, I'm out with the kids and I remember. No, no, you're playing Fortnite or whatever, or Madden, and you're just like, you know, I'll, I'll get to like a few hours, dude, it's all good, bro. In that situation, it becomes invalid and they have to go make a whole gusul. Why? Because at the moment the person remembered, it became what? It became obligatory. And if they wait, this would be muwala. This would be a long break of time between the washing, which is what? One of the conditions of ghusl. You understand what just happened? Because, and here you see something, this like idea of exoteric and esoteric, but I ain't wet. But your knee is to be wet, even though you're not wet. So you gotta jump in and get that, why that knee is still fresh. It's really cool. And it tells you that the heart has some power, man. So, yes? So, it seems like you're saying that um, if the person remembers and then waits. I, I'm not saying, he's saying. That's what I'm going to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah, yeah. My yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to understand what you said. Um, I'm just repeating what you said. So, if a person remembers and then he delays after remembering, then that would invalidate it. Yeah, without, if they delayed it because if he were, because the moment he remembers, it's like he's back washing. Understand that? And if you, if you do not engage in fawr, means immediacy, what happens to the ghusl? See, see the axiom that's happening here? Yeah. What if you remember when you're at work and you do it right away, you just do it as soon as you can? Yeah, e even in that situation, better to go back and make gusul, okay. yeah. But if you do it as soon as you remember, then you're okay. Exactly. Okay. Why you gotta put on me, man? I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Why you gotta come at me, man? <laughs> yes, sir. Can you, can you clarify the, the aspect of prayers that are, so like you mentioned a month time frame, does that mean you have to make up? Absolutely, yeah. So the person will need to make up that month, but you could divide it like instead of praying the sunnah. So, 
Why is it that in this case there's not as much rahma as like the, the clothing thing that we mentioned? Before? Yeah, because this is like personal purity. This is your, this has to, ta'meem has to happen. It's kind of firm. Yes, ma'am. Going back to Lauren's comment about like, if you remember when you're at work, like let's say you remember at like, I don't know, 11 a.m. and then you don't get back home and don't have the opportunity to make this it again until like Maghrib. What do you do about the Bukhar and Asa prayers that like fall in that period where you're not in the state? You pray them. It's a good question. Why would you pray them? Because Maqasid before was said, you have to pray them. But then you would make them up also later. Question. Yes. Is that because the, the, the obligation and the uh, rewards? Is Absolutely. No, because you got to pray. Oh, because it's time. Because yeah, you got to pray. So does that mean when you make it up, you have to pray on its time too, like the whole, the whole like No, when you make it up, you can, okay, so the issue, this is a good question, it's going to come later. You can make qada at any time, even in the times that like you're not allowed to pray, you can make qada. Because it's qada. What if I die, God forbid, like before, you know what I mean? I have like some extra prayers to make up. I like to tell people in Ramadan, just make niya to make up all your fajrs you missed in taraweeh. I mean, in one day you knocked out like, mashallah, quite a bit. You can, um, you can make a niya for a, to make up a fard and a sunnah. It's a difference of opinion on this issue. Because you're not the imam. Sheikh Ahmad Taharayan in the madhab, no. But the Raj, yes. Sheikh Ahmad Taharayan told me, he's the imam of the Malikis, Allah Yarhamu, just died recently of COVID. That Sayyidina Imam Shafi had 22 evidences to show you could do this. We don't have anything. So if you want to be muqallid, no. If you want to stick to the madhab, no. But I'm trained not to give answers that are hard for people, in general, if the dalil is strong. In ifta, yes. Sorry. It's okay. I just, I don't want to derail the conversation. <laughs> it's okay. But can you just briefly, I was talking about this with someone the other day. Can you briefly summarize what are the times of day that we're not supposed to pray? We're going to get to that in the book. Okay. That's in front of us. It's a good question. Waqtul Hurma. But for Qada, there's no Waqtul Hurma. Unless you're in a masjid that people might beat you up for praying at the time. <laughs> you don't want to tell them. Because <laughs> you don't want to tell them, like, hey, I missed all these prayers, you know what I'm saying, so I'm going to make all these prayers. But that's between you. I have another really question. Yes. So if you do just the, what's like, the intervals of Russell, it might not necessarily mean you've completed every single step of wudu. Is that right? Well, you would universally have made wudu, but not specifically made wudu, because the water touched your entire body. So you would still have wudu? You would still have wudu, yeah. So let's say, let's say I, I got kids, the house, I got kids, you got kids. Get home, you gotta take gusul, but you got a baby. You might just have to jump in, hola, gusul, clean me up. And go out and pray, because you got kids. That's why he divides it into sunnah and fadail and ob uh, obligations are four. You need the fadail are uh, sufficient for uh, But we shouldn't do it all the time as a habit because it's a bad thing. Yeah, what you're but there's reasons for that. What time is it? It is 8.08. Oh man, we got to hurry. And I think also I want to emphasize, like I was trained as a mufti, so I was trained in my school, but I don't give fatwa as a muqallid in the Maliki Madhab to anybody. And Sheikh Ahmad Tahrayan, when I asked him, he said, give what's easy for people. And Dr. Ali Juma, I know he's very controversial, I'm not a fan. One of the last conversations I had, because I trained in his school, was you got to deal with your people according to what their realities are. Just don't take them outside of obedience. So I'm not a fan of reading Akhdari like this is Quran. I'm not a fan of that. And I know people, that's what they want to do, that's what they want to, hey, God bless you, got no problems with it. I don't have any bad thing to say about you. But don't give fatwa. Don't answer the questions of a very dynamic, rich community that is coming from multiple perspectives and multiple realities without like taking into consideration who you're serving, man. On acts of worship, I would consider, yeah, you, you want to stick to your madhab, but if people don't follow that madhab, you're going to make it hard for them. Man. And a great example is your question. 
When we studied Nila Otaro Sheikh Ahmad Taharayan and under his house, we came across this issue. Can you join the Sunnah and the Nafil and the Fard? It's like Sayyidina Mu'adh, he led the people in Salah. He had already prayed Isha. In Quba, he prayed Isha in Medina. He was the Imam. He led them in Salah with Niyat and Nafil. They prayed the Fard. Hadha hadith sahih yu'malu bihi. So he said to me, 22 evidences to show you can do this from the Sahaba. I, in, at the end of the day, you're commanded to follow the haqq. Al-Rajah. So if we're more interested in serving our madhab than serving the Muslims, this is a problem. It's not, it's not a sports team, right? In the sense of I hold it sacred, I value it, I, I love it, but if I know to give this answer may hurt somebody, even though Khalil said it, I'm not giving that answer. If, it's gonna, if I know that there's another answer that's there. Yes, sir. I don't remember what their reasoning is. I think their reasoning is what in the kulimbre in right? So like you get that intention is what that intention is for. Not the actions of the people of Medina, why the people of Medina? Although he died in Damascus. No, no, I mean the the uh, not the Raja opinion, the opinion that Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Sorry. I don't remember. But it's a valid opinion, right? Somebody wants to follow it, alhamdulillah. But yeah, I remember he started laughing. I mean, you're talking about the head of the Maliki school in Egypt at that time. He said, man, you got 22 evidences, man. <laughs> They're all sahih. What do you do? Right? You can't in good conscience tubtal hadha qaw. And another thing that's a challenge with madhab fanaticism is it takes us away from being just. That's why we see Sayyidina Imam Malik, he has different opinions for different people. People came from Iraq, he would give them an answer that was for the people of Medina. Then he would say, wait, 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 where are you from? From Iraq. No, 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 come back, come back, come back. You, you got a different answer for you. Not, not related to acts of worship. That's fixed. But like cultural, social issues. And I know that, that lo locates me sort of as a modernist or whatever, but hey, I can only go off what I'm trained. You know, that, that's, that's what I know. That takes us now, alhamdulillah, as we, we need to move quickly to an interesting issue. Sheikh, says, وَلَا يَجُوزُ لِمَنْ لَا يَقْدِرُ Remember the last one he talked about, you forgot. So now he's going to move to a second issue. What do you think it's going to be about? About ability. What's he doing here? He's modeling the axioms for you without saying it. Because we said that largely, there's more to this, but I'm making it simple. A tahara sits on two things, a dhikr wa qudra. So somebody forgot or, you know, that they, they had some impurity or forgot to wash a certain part. That was the last issue. So that expanded and animated this idea of what does it mean to remember. So then consequently, the second theological issue he's gonna address, what do you think it has to deal with? Ability. So he says, وَلَا يَجُوزُ لِمَنْ لَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَى الْمَاءِ الْبَارِدِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ زَوْجَتَهُ حَتَّى يُعِدَّ الْآلَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَحْتَلِمَا فَلَا شَيْءَ عَلَيْهِ This is an issue of fiqh. This is an issue that the early Muslims differed over. Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Ali, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. That if somebody is with his family and they don't have something that can cool the water or warm the water, I'll add both to this discussion, because it may harm them. He said at that moment, it's not allowed for them to have intercourse until they find what will allow them to find an instrument that will make that water either cool or hot. I'm adding hot here just to help us understand it better. However, Imam Ibn Rushd and others they say وَأَرَّاجِحْ إِتْيَانُ أَهْلِهِ لِأَنَّ الْأَصْلَ الْإِبَاحَ He said that, no, no, the stronger opinion is that it's allowed to, why? Because having sexual relationships is permissible. And something permissible cannot be 
change unless there's a delil. The argument here is there is a delil. It's not an explicit, it's not explicit, it's implicit, and that is harm. Why? Because what's one of the axioms? Harm is what? Removed. So they're saying if, you know, those people have sexual relations and they have to like take goose on really cold water or really hot water, it may harm them, it may not harm them, or they may run out of water or whatever, it's better not to do it. So you see there's, there's some argument. And now as he finishes talking about having safe water or enough water, that takes us to our next discussion. What do you think it's going to be? Exactly. A tayammum. And he says, This is the opinion of the madhab and a few others. That if you're traveling to do evil, you're not eligible for dispensation. We talked about this in Wudu. And Amr says like crazy, back then even evil people were like worried about Wudu and Tayammu. <laughs> How to pray. Walmuridu li faridatin aw nafilatin. It's allowed for a sick person to make tayammum for a fard or a voluntary act of worship. Wa yatayammamu al hadiru al sahihu lil faraidi idha khafa khuruja waktiha. And for someone who's a resident, if they fear that they don't have enough time to make wudu or ghusl, and the prayer will go out, they can make tayammu. Why? I talked about this axiom earlier. It's mentioned by Sheikh Al-Adawi. Al-Maqasid tuqaddim ala wasa'iriha fil madhab. That objectives are given precedence over the means. So it would be better for that person to pray in time with tayammum than to miss the prayer time trying to make wudu or ghusl. Because tayammum and wudu and ghusl are wasail. And the prayer is the maqasid. Prayers are prescribed at specific times. What's the best thing to do? He said, As-salatu ala waqtiha. To pray in time. So what does that mean? Say someone has, uh, you know, menstruation. They woke up, menstruation is done, but like there's like a minute left or two minutes left before Fajr goes out, make tayammum and pray. And you don't have to make the prayer. Right? No. Why? Because one of the foundational principles of Tahara is what? Who remembers? Starts with an A. You asked me the word. Ability. ability. You don't have the ability to do it now. So, can I clarify that? Does that mean if I wake up in the morning and Fajr is about to run out and I am in the state of Janaba, I can make the Yamun and make Salah? Or not even in the state of Janaba. Let's say you just don't have time to make Wudu. Like you're pure even. But it's like, yo, I got like 30 seconds. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Let me get that first recording. Okay. So even if you're not in a state of sexual defilement or just don't have enough time. But clearly that's only for Fajr, right? For Duhar, just the whole La, any prayer. Okay. Any prayer. Okay. So listen to what he says in Arabic. He says, very nice. He fears, she fears that the time is going to expire. Sometimes at work it happens. When I used to teach at a high school, I couldn't leave the classroom and go make wudu, man. And the time is like, click, click. I'm like, oh man, I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I don't wanna start joining prayers every day, dude. This is emphasizing the time of the prayer itself. The maqasid, the, the salah, the ibadah, yes. Right. Okay. The action. Understand. Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting. And you want to remember this axiom because it comes a lot in other things, man. That's why I like to say Al-Akhdari is written in a very simple way, but it's a lot going on in the back end that we haven't really been exposed to in the English language. The way that the Egyptians teach the Maliki Madhab, that's why the Egyptian school is considered the head of the Madhab till now. 
because of the depth of the usul that they have. It's not to create like Egyptian, pro-Egyptian, not just it is what it is. The Maliki say this. The Egyptians say to the Moroccans and the Mauritanians, the sun rises from the east. And they start the battle. Right? But alhamdulillah, kulun ala khairi. Excuse me. Um, if I, like say tomorrow, um, and I don't know when Frederick is, but say it's at like at 4.32, um, and I like wake up and it's like 4.28, uh, um, it, like when you say the fear of missing the time of the prayer, does that mean the start of the prayer or like the end? The end. End, okay. So if, if I wake up at like 428 and it's start in front of start at 432 I can just go ahead and um, do my regular will do and um, like my normal prayer but if I wake up at like say, say uh, Fudge and ends at like 630 or something and I wake up at 628 then that would be where the uh, Tayyam um, would apply exactly okay. that's excellent excellent thank you that's a great question thank you man MashaAllah. So he says, wa muridu li faridatin aw nafilatin wa yatayammamu al hadiru al sahihu lil faraidi idha khafa khuruj waqtiha. Wa la yatayammamu al hadiru al sahihu li nafilatin wa la jumu'atin wa la jinazatin illa idha ta'ayyanat alayhi al jinaza. This issue actually is one that needs to be addressed because sometimes it gets our brothers and sisters in trouble. That is, Al-Akhtari says, and it is not allowed for somebody who is a healthy resident to make tayammum for Jumu'ah or a janaza unless, unless he's the one that is the only one who can perform the janaza, right? However, this is not the strongest opinion in the school. Unfortunately, I heard of an incident a few weeks ago on the West Coast where people refused to pray janazah for a brother because they said we can't make tayammum for his janazah, there's someone that can do it for him. Like, and he's, subhanAllah, go buy some water! Yeah. Right, but we're going to talk about this in a second and what a Sheikh Khalil he says about this. Wait, what happened? You, what happened? I'm so confused. Uh, so in the madhab, in, no, no. Janaza is the actual funeral prayer. So he's saying if you are a resident and healthy, you're not allowed to use tayammum for Jumu'ah. Why? Because you can pray Dhuhr. It's the argument. Wala janaza illa idha ta'ayyinat alik. Unless you're the only one who can pray. Why? Because fard kifaya. It's the argument he's making. But as I just said, as we'll see in a second, this needs to be clarified in the translations of Al-Akhdari and the explanations of Al-Akhdari that are out there. This needs to be clarified for people because it leads to problems sometimes. People don't pray janazah for their brother, man. Yeah. Wow, man, I, I, I ain't got what to do. I could make to him. <laughs> Your brother? Is there an axioms about no harm? Or... Yeah, but not, not here. We'll get to it. But we're going to talk about this. Then he says, وَفَرَائِدُ tayammum." Here are the obligations of tayammum. I really need to finish tayammum today, sorry. A niya, intention. It's an act of worship. Wasaidu ta'ir. I'm not saying sorry about your question. Sorry to you for taking too much time. Wasaidu al-tahir. Right, clean earth. Sa'id, this form fa'il. If you speak Arabic, means maf'ul, mas'ud, yani. Wa mas'ul wajh to wipe your face. وَمَسْحُ الْيَدَيْنِ إِلَى الْكَوْعِينِ And to wipe to your wrist, from your here to here. So intention, earth, face, wrist. Hand to wrist. وَدَرْبَةُ الْأَرْضِ الْأُولَى Obviously, because if you don't hit the earth once, you're not going to have to <laughs> This guy like, has to happen. وَالْفَوْرُ Again, we see it over and over in the madhab. They do it with continuity, you don't like, oh man, let me go catch that football dog. Like, oh, all right. I think this is harder not to do it continuously. You gotta do it continuously. What do you call it? And it has to be the time for that prayer. So like, it's, it's, it's not Isha, 
I'm not gonna make tayammum now for Isha because I might find water. And also because of the hadith. Adraktahu as salah. Prophet says, when the salah reaches you, then. So the time of the prayer is in. What the salah be salah? If you're doing it for salah, tayammum for salah, then as soon as you finish the tayammum, you should start that prayer. Ittisal bi salah. Wa sa'id huwa turab wa tub. Then he defines what is sa'id. With sa'id, not with seen. Sa'id is happy. Sa'id, like flat earth. Mas'ud. Is dirt or dust. And tub, tub is actually an ancient Nubian word. Ancient Egyptian word, which means like adobe. Wal hajar, a stone. Wal thalj, snow and ice. Wal khadkhad, which is like mud. Wal nahwu dharik, and anything similar to that. Is sa'id. Wal ayajuzu bil jissi al matbukh, like cooked plaster. Like cement, like cooked cement or plaster. Wal hasir, a rug. It's not on the earth now. That's, that's, you cannot. Cannot. Wal khashab, wood. Wal hashishi. And hashishi is not hashishi as you think now. It means grass. Oh, like, grass not just like this, you know, hey man, let me touch the grass. If you go down underneath the grass, you're going to touch the dirt, but like, just the grass itself. Wal nahwi. It's something similar to grass, like a fern. وَرُخِصَ لِلْمُرِيدِ فِي حَائِتِ الْحَجَرِ وَطُوبِ إِنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ مُنَاوِلًا غَيْرَهُ It says, but for somebody who's ill, it's allowed for them. رُخْصَ means dispensation. The Sharia, Sheikh Muhammad Hassan al Diddu told me, our teacher, that رُخْ that Sharia sits between two things, what's called azima and رُخَص. Azima are those things you have to do in a normal situation, like gusul in a normal situation. Fasting in Ramadan. But the rukhsa is if I'm traveling or I'm sick, I don't have to fast. So a sharia taqif bayna al azaim wa rukhas. So he says, an azaim means those things that are the, the default. Rukhsa are those things that come and go, they're not permanent. They're based on a situation that usually is not permanent. Usually, usually. So he says, وَرُخِيْسَ لِلْمُورِيدِ A sick person is allowed to make tayammum with walls. Like in a building, in a hospital. Maybe you're there, someone's like, I don't, I, how do I make, how do I make tayammum? Just hit the walls, man. وَرُخِيْسَ لِلْمُورِيدِ Why? Because sickness is from one of the five things that allows difficulties, that allows these things to become easy. الْمُشَقَّةَ تَزْرِبُ تَسِيرِ What are the five difficulties? I try to remember them now, but I'm getting old. Forgetting. Fear. So early when he said, "Ida khafa khuruja waktiha," if he fears or she fears that the time of prayer is going to go out, here's the axiom: al moshaqat tajibu tasir. Hardship makes things easy. Ida dayqa itasaa. Shafi says, if something starts to restrict you, the Sharia expands it. It's like really beautiful statement. So one of the five moshaqa is khauf, fear. And if we had time, we don't have time because the class is quick. I will take you back through all this and show you the five as we learn them. So you remember, oh, that issue, that issue, that issue. That will, actually, maybe I'll make that your homework. Yes, that's your homework. What are the five mushaqqat that makes things easy when they happen? Sickness. So now he says, rukhisa. What does that mean? The mushaqqa means there's going to be rukhsa. There's going to be dispensation. So one, sickness. Two, fear. Three, so like when a sister fears praying. If I pray at the mall, pray in the parking lot, or brother, someone may hurt me, can I pray in my car? Absolutely. Or pray it later. Join the prayers later. Number three, forgetfulness. Nisyan. 
Number four, travel. Number five, I forgot. Um, ignorance. Uh, ignorance. Uh, I don't know. No. So sickness, fear, forgetfulness, travel, al jahl, ignorance. Fatah Allah lak. When they came to say to Musa, "Ij'alna ilahan kama lahum ariha." Can you make idols for us? Did he say, "Antum kufar"? La, because they are from the Rububiya. They had a problem in Uluhiya. Ah, see something. The opposite of al Madhab al Wahhabiya. To Ahl Sunnah, hona al Ayadi. Ij'alna ilahan kama lahum ariha. Make for us an idol. Did he say, "Antum kufar"? You are of Islam. You have to take shahada. He said, "Inna kum qawmun tujhalun." You're ignorant. Al-Uzru bil Jahal. You have an axiom. Thank you, Yunus. That ignorance is forgiven. That's why Sayyidina Imam Zahabi said, if I saw someone making, if I saw someone making sajda to the grave of the Prophet, I would not declare him out of Islam until I talk to him. Because the Rububiya is there. Now the opposite. So that's why we find people always worried about people's actions. What if their heart is in the right place, man? You don't understand, maybe they made a mistake. That's why I say to Imam Shokani, sorry, Imam Shokani said, no one leaves Islam ka wudu is shams. That no one leaves Islam except it's like bright like the day. Imam Abu Hanifa said, no one leaves Islam except the way they became Muslim. When I became Muslim, Allah Akbar, Takbir, MashaAllah, brothers Muslim, everybody knew about it. Now it's like, man, I don't know about that brother Zakid, Aki. I don't know. I don't know. This brother, man, I saw him praying in the wrong direction. I think he might be out of his... This is, this is khawarij, fitna. So good. You were saying something, Akhi. Yeah, uh, are these for uh, the atmosphere of forgetfulness of God? Are these reasons uh, uh, for tayammum? For dispensation in general. But he mentions one in tayammum only. He mentions two. Fear? And sickness. Remember earlier, this is a good question. He said, he's asking me, are all these because of tayammum? No, these are generally going to be applied as we read the books of fiqh. We're going to see when someone fears, when someone's sick, when someone forgets, when someone's traveling, when someone is ignorant, these things happen. That's why Sheikh Khalil, he says about leaving Islam, kufrun sarih. That it's clear kufr. Not, uh, eh, 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 eh. Someone wrote recently on YouTube, I wish you would talk about metaphysical shirk. What the heck is metaphysical shirk, man? There's no such thing as, and it's not to disrespect the person. But this creates madness. Start like, who do you really love, Akhi? You love Allah enough? And then that starts to lead to having like, who's Muslim? And then that leads to like khawarijism. Inshallah, we assume the best. People love Allah. People love His Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khalas al-ummah ala khair. And the Prophet ﷺ said in a sound hadith, my ummah will never commit shirk. Why? Rububiyya. They may make mistakes in actions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. Insha'Allah. So, وَرُخِصَ لِمُرِيدِ فِي حَائِتِ الْحَجَرِ وَطُوبِ إِن لَمْ يَجِدْ مُنَاوِلًا غَيْرًا So the person who's ill and doesn't have someone to help them either make wudu or make tayammum, it's allowed for them to use the walls. Quick question about that? Yes. Um, so most, so like, like modern day, most walls are like made of plastic. So would that be a problem? Ruhi salahum. It's dispensation. That's why he said it. It's allowed because they're sick. No contradiction. Not for you and me, for them. No, it says stone, though, in the, in the book. Like, I mean, the reason whose asking, translation are you using? The reason I'm asking the question yeah. is because. Um, no, but whose translation is that? Well, no, I mean, the Arabic says hajr. Like, yeah. I'm not going by the translation, just the Arabic itself. And and before that, it mentions that. But also watub. Like clay or something? Yeah, yeah, like adobe. Right. Like, the reason I'm asking is because before it says it's not permissible to perform tayammum with like plaster. Got you. See what you're saying. So uh, uh, for, this, for this person, if they cannot find, yes, yeah, great question. I see what you're saying now. 
if, if, if that person cannot find anyone to help them, and that's all they can do, that's all they can do. What would they do? What, what's, what, what's the alternative? Not praying. They carry rock with <laughs> someone, if he can't find someone to help him, so he could call someone, hey man, can you bring me a rock? Can you bring me something? But if he, here he says he can't, he doesn't find anyone to help him. So what would he do? That's a good, it's a great question. Like, I want people to feel like, I don't catch feelings if you ask questions. Wallahi. And I know American Muslims, we're very sensitive. I'm not like that. I love this. And I love when you ask questions. I love when you ask questions, honestly. Right? Because it ain't about me. If I'm wrong, like now, you, what you said, oh yeah, yeah, Hajar, I didn't see it. So I appreciate that, I'm, I'm learning myself. And we have to create a climate where we ain't so much involved with our egos in this joint. That's why I love you, Sheikh Abdul Razak. Cause like, you just ask good questions, bro. Yes, sir. I gotta really finish, man. So, so I'm sorry, cause we, we, we're gonna run out of time. Yeah. Right, so the sunnah of, of, of Tayammum is that after you Hit it once and you do your face and you do it, you hit again for your hands. And that when you wipe your hands, you wipe from here to here. The sunnah, not the fard. The fard is here to here. But the sunnah all the way a little bit beyond the elbows. وَتَرْتِيبَ And to follow the proper order. وَنَوَاقِدُهُ وَالْفَيَلَيْتِ uh, Then he says وَفَضَائِلُهُ وَالْتَسْمِيَةِ The virtuous things are to say Bismillah before you start. وَتَقْدِيمُ الْيُمْنَ عَلَى الْيُسْرَى To start with your right before your left. وَتَقْدِيمُ الظَّاهِرَ الذِّرَاعِ عَلَى بَاطِنِهِ وَمُقَدِّمِهِ عَلَى مُؤَخِرِ What that means is also it's considered extra awesome if you start from the front and you start the top, not the bottom. MashaAllah. وَنَوَاقِدُهُ What are the things that invalidate tayammum? There's a simple axiom. نَوَاقِدُ الْوُضُوْ نَوَاقِدُ tayammum. That in general what violates wudu violates tayammum except wujud al Except if you find water. Find water, then you know, different issue. If I have wudu and I find water, do I have to make wudu again? No. No. La tusalli farida tani. Inshallah, next time, I really, I don't want to fall too far behind, but we're running out of time. It's time for Maghrib. Yeah, yeah, we, we, can, we can pick it up from here uh, next time. I really appreciate these uh, great questions. If you have any other amazing questions, feel free to ask, to differ, wallahi. That's how we learn. We have to create a climate where we can differ. It's not, not healthy, man. And we, we, especially convert brothers and sisters, we know that we've seen communities die because you can't ask questions. May Allah give us a tawfiq. Yes, sir.